Hacking for a cruise can be complicated, especially for first-timers who aren't 100% sure what to expect. And when you're on a cruise ship, of course, if you forget anything, not like you could run to the mall to pick something back up again. So what should you pack for your cruise? I've got the ultimate cruise packing list up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com. There are so many fun things to do on a cruise in addition to all the great excursions. So how do you pack for everything? Hopefully today I'm going to walk you through a detailed list of what to pack along with some helpful tips. The goal here is to provide you a cruise packing list that accounts for cruise line dress codes for the daytime and evening and of course the various activities that you'll be doing on board and in port, the gear you'll need for travel and of course whatever you're going to need to enhance your cruise cabin and really everything else in between. So we're talking essentials and upgrades to make sure that you can pack properly for any cruise vacation. So here's my best packing strategies and suggestions. Let's start off with luggage. Before you even start packing, it's a really good idea to make sure you have the right luggage. Royal Caribbean does not have a specific limit on the number of suitcases you can bring. It's unlike the airlines. They don't limit you in that regard. So that being said, if you're still flying to your cruise, well, you'll be limited by that. But if you're driving to your cruise or are otherwise able to get more stuff, there's no limit for what Royal Caribbean allows you to bring on board. For ease of travel, I think good four-wheel rolling suitcases along with a travel-style knapsack is a really good idea. And speaking of luggage, by the way, a good hard case type of luggage is probably best than soft-covered suitcases because, of course, if it rains, something hits it, it's just a good idea. So if you're in the market for buying new luggage, a hard case luggage can be a really good idea. When cruising, it can be a couple of hours before you receive your suitcases, so you want to consider carry-on luggage as well that can easily manage all your necessities until your cabin is ready. Your cruise carry-on should have enough room for important valuables, required travel documents, and anything else you might need right away, such as flip-flops, a bathing suit, and of course your cash and important things that you just don't want to leave to chance you want to have with you. I think it makes sense to start off with the daytime packing, basically what you're going to need during the daytime on your cruise. How many outfits should you pack? That really depends on the length and type of cruise. There are no self-service laundry facilities on a Royal Caribbean ship, but washing, pressing, and dry cleaning services are offered at an additional cost. So it's a really good idea to plan for clothes for the number of days, plus a return home outfit. Don't forget those. Two outfits per day is a really good rule of thumb. We're talking about daytime and nighttime. You want to pack clothes that are appropriate for the climate. For the warm Caribbean sun, you really want to have clothing that's going to keep you cool and comfortable at the pool. It's a good idea, maybe a week or two before your cruise, to look at the average temperatures and projected rainfall amounts. Generally speaking, when you're packing for a cruise during the daytime, here are some considerations. You want clothes for lounging and the pool, such as tees and tank tops, shorts, sundresses, swimwear, and cover-ups. You're also going to want a comfortable pair of flip-flops and sandals. Jeans and pants are a good idea. Active wear, including running and walking shoes. Clothes for onboard activities, such as the all-access ship tour, zip lining, rock climbing, which all require, by the way, clothes to choose. For chillier spots like the ice rink, you're also going to make sure you have pants and a sweater. And don't forget socks. It's really easy to overlook socks when you're packing for a warm Caribbean cruise. And of course, sunglasses, a sun hat or visor, and maybe even a lanyard for your sea pass. It's a really good idea, by the way, to bring magnetic hooks that you can use in your cruise cabin. So that way you can help organize clothes while on board. Remember, cruise ship cabins tend not to have a ton of storage space and magnets, which can be attached to really any wall in your cabin because all the walls are metal, can really expand your storage options. Now let's talk about what you're going to need in the evening. For evening events, the dress code varies, but generally speaking, things are a lot less formal than they used to be. Many people on a cruise wear what I would consider to be smart casual for formal night. Royal Caribbean's website explains the dress code and that they'll have smart casual and formal nights and even theme parties like a white party or 70s and 80s dance parties. Again, it depends on the cruise. Here's the number one thing you want to figure out. Number one, go to royalcaribbeanblog.com. Yes, this is a shameless plug, but it's important and helpful because if you go to our main menu, there's a link for cruise compasses. Find a cruise compass from the sailing that you're going on. So Symphony of the Seas or Harmony of the Seas. Find a similar sailing, Seven Night Caribbean. And then look at the themes. Figure out how many formal nights there are. Figure out what parties there are so you can pack appropriately. Now, it's okay if you don't want to dress up for 70s dance party. Don't worry. It's a very limited event, and you will not be out of place if you're not dressed up. In fact, it's more op likely the opposite, where there's a few people dressed up for 70s party. But hey, some people like to be part of the party, and you could as well. But really what you're looking at is how many formal nights, how many casual nights, 
and then pack appropriately for that. Now, how formal is formal? Do you need to get your ball gowns out? Maybe break out your senior prom dress? Eh, not quite. Certainly, there will be some people that will dress up to the nines and they will dress to impress. And I love that. And sometimes we like to do that because it's fun to do that. But if you just want to wear a polo shirt for guys and a nice skirt or dress blouse and nice pair of jeans, totally fine as well. Don't overthink the dress codes. But in general, you should have basically clothes for the daytime and clothes for the evening time when you're going to dinner and whatnot. Do some people go on a cruise and wear the same pair of shorts and shirt the entire day and evening? Yes, of course they do. But I still think a majority of people decide, or opt to anyway, get dressed up for the evening hours so they have something different to wear for dinner. And let's face it, if you're going out and about during your daytime, you're going to be hot and sweaty and clothes, especially in the Caribbean, can get very warm and gross and you're not going to want to wear them to dinner necessarily. So it's a good idea to have a change of clothes for the evening. One other thing to consider about the evening wear is when you're inside and you're in a dining room, a lot of times the air conditioning can really be turned up in the cruise ships. And certainly, even though you're in the Caribbean, you might end up being a little chilly. So it's a good idea to pack a light sweater or dressy shawl to keep you comfortable in the cool onboard restaurants and theaters. And one more thing about the evening, if you're sharing a cabin with friends or family members, don't forget your pajamas. So that way you have something to wear to go to bed. In terms of footwear, really, you can go to town with a lot of different shoes that you think you're going to need, because after all, you're going to think that there's a lot of different needs for different kinds of shoes. The must-have basic is a comfortable pair of travel shoes for the flight, ship, and walking around in port. You want to pack sneakers for athletic activities, flip-flops to the pool and beach, and dress shoes for dinner. You might also want casual or athletic sandals, hiking boots, or water shoes for rocky beaches. Your best bet in order to conserve space in your luggage, because shoes do take up a lot of space, is try to figure out which shoes can do double duty. Which shoes could you use in different situations? Like if you have athletic sandals that are really good for traveling, you can also wear them at the beach or even a rugged activity. A comfortable pair of flats can pair with your casual day wear and fancy evening attire, or so my wife tells me. All right, now let's talk about what you're going to need while you're in port and on your shore excursions. Whether it's a beach day, a bicycle tour, or snorkeling, there's a few things you're going to need to bring with you on port. And this is probably where most people forget about packing because they think about the cruise ship, but then neglect to think about what they're going to need when they're on shore. It's always a really good idea to keep valuables such as your phone and wallet safe when venturing in ports. A lot of people like crossbody bags with secure locks or even a money belt as a good idea. Generally speaking, for water and beach outings, you want to really bring with you maybe a mask or goggles and snorkeling, if that's your thing, of course. Water shoes, if needed. I'm not a big fan of them, but some people like them. Life jackets or flotation devices, especially for kids who can't swim. Waterproof phone carrier, towel clips, beach bag, bug spray, sunscreen, and lip balm. You're also going to want to bring, again, those comfortable shoes we're talking about for walking and what's considered appropriate for the activity. Some people like goggles or even bandanas if you're taking an ATV tour because... Well, you're going to get pretty dirty and dusty on that. Now, so far, I've really been talking about the warmer Caribbean climates. But if your cruise goes to Alaska, what if you're going to northern Europe or somewhere else a little chillier than, you know, 80-something degrees out there? In that kind of situation, you're going to make sure you pack appropriately for those climates. Certainly, shirts and T-shirts for your inner layers are a really good idea. Warm layers, like a fleece pullover, is something you want to pack. A waterproof jacket is a must, especially if you're going to Alaska. Suitable closed-toed shoes. Boots for hiking, if you're going to go hiking, of course. Gloves, hat, and a scarf if you're going to be a little chilly. Binoculars, water-resistant backpack is a really good idea, especially in Alaska again. And insect repellent is even more important in Alaska than it is in the Caribbean. If you're traveling with toddlers or any kid that's still like in diapers and whatnot, then it's a really good idea to bring, in addition everything we talked about, special things for them. When it comes to packing for toddlers and infants, you want to pack way more than you think you would need for the time of your cruise. Usually as a parent, if you think, okay, seven days, I will need this many diapers, this many wipes, this many cream, but you want to like multiply that by like 25 or 50% because that when you're going on a cruise, for some reason, you just go through more than you usually do at home. But you want to make sure that you bring diapers, especially extra ones, because it's hard to get the right brand when you're on a cruise or in a foreign country, baby wipes, rash cream, extra plastic bags for wet items, extra clothes for the kids, a light blanket, a stroller, car seat bottles or sippy cups, baby food and formula that's prepackaged, activities like coloring, stickers, books, etc., and maybe even favorite shows or games on a tablet. In fact, downloading your favorite kids' movies and TV shows on a tablet to be able to watch offline has probably saved my sanity and at least 10 other people around us sanity by having that there. You never know what you don't know. 
Next up on our packing list for a cruise is toiletries. And most of us use several products throughout the day from our morning routine to bedtime regimen. This can translate into a fair number of things to bring along, but you want to obviously try to bring as much travel stuff as possible, which really means smaller sizes for all these items. We're talking about shampoo and conditioner, skincare products, makeup, eye care like glass cleaners and contact solution, anything you need for dental like a toothbrush, toothpaste, and floss, of course, curling, flat irons, cabins do have blow dryers, but if you were to ask my wife, she'd tell you bring your own blow dryer, shaving products, brush, comb, and elastic hair accessories, deodorant, and nail products. Many people find as a good little cabin hack to bring an over-the-door shoe rack and magnetic hooks, again, to help with toiletries and organizing and providing extra space. You could certainly do that and get those like a dollar stores for really cheap. And for some reason, travel size products can be pricey despite their size. We talked about the fact that you want to save on size, but reusable travel bottles are a good way to get around that problem. So that way you still get a smaller size, but you're not overpaying for the smaller container. Another critical item you're going to want to pack is first aid and medications. While some items can be purchased on board the ship, it's a really good idea to have everything you need on hand. So that way you're not dependent on anything else. Plus it'll save you money. It should go without saying you need to bring any prescription medicine with you that you're going to need during the cruise, but you also want to think almost worst case scenario in that sometimes you might get seasick or something else might happen to you. So it's a really good idea to have seasick remedies, pain and allergy products, afterburn care like aloe, lip balm and bug spray, anti-itch cream like hydrocortisone cream, first aid items such as band-aids and antibacterial ointment, upset stomach medications, cold medicine and eye drops. Remember, be prepared, better to have this stuff and not use it than wish you had it later. At the beginning of this video, we talked about your carry-on bag, and that's a really important piece of luggage you're gonna bring with you throughout the cruise terminal. So you're gonna give the rest of your luggage to the porters, but this is the bag, the carry-on bag, that you'll be taking with you all the way up until you get back to your cabin. Now, cruisers are gonna need all the required travel documents, such as passports and driver's license, birth certificates, so you wanna keep that in there. But in addition, you wanna put in your carry-on bag all your money, like cash, electronics like phone, tablets, earbuds, chargers, camera, required medication, at least three days worth is a really good idea, just in case, eyewear like your glasses, contacts, and sunglasses, comfort items such as gum, mints, and snacks, your phone battery, because of course, you know, sometimes the lithium ion batteries can be a problem with being packed in, hand sanitizer and wipes, pens, and maybe even a COVID-19 test kit just in case. Now, in terms of drinks, Royal Caribbean does allow you to bring a specific quantity of drinks on board. And this can be a real money saver for you. And also, it'd just be nice to have the exact brand of drinks that you like. Royal Caribbean allows each stateroom, not guests, each cabin, to bring up to two 750 milliliter bottles of wine or champagne as long as one guest is of legal drinking age. Guests can also bring non-alcoholic beverages up to 12 standard 17-ounce cans, bottles, or cartons per stateroom, and milk or distilled water brought on board for infant medical or dietary use. That being said, you cannot bring any other type of alcohol on board, so you can't bring beer or liquor as well. Now, if you want to, you can also bring prepackaged foods. That's totally fine. You might say, well, why would I want to bring food on a cruise ship? There's plenty of food on board. This is true. However, sometimes you want to have a little snack in the room. This is really important for kids, like cookies or crackers, something to have basically in between. Something else I think is a real must-pack these days is an extra outlet because, of course, on Royal Caribbean cruise ships, there's just not a lot of outlets that are out there. So it's a really good idea to get on Amazon and get one of those USB hubs so that we have more outlets. You're not like really going all out and trying to compete for who can use the outlet at any given time. Some other really important things to the pack that really doesn't fall into any other category we talked about is a nightlight because of course cabins can be really dark, especially inside cabins, reading material. Maybe you want to bring your Kindle, a magazine, a book, flashlight, straws, because people sometimes really care about whether they have a plastic straw or not, towel clips, a fan must be cordless, but can plug into USB. That's totally fine. And a multi-outlet USB charger, which is non-surge protected, which I just talked about a little earlier. And a really good idea is to pack Ziploc bags because there's just so many use cases for them. Whether you're bringing dirty shoes, clothes, organizing, you just don't know until you know that you need a Ziploc bag. So it's a really good idea to bring those. Now, we talked about the things to bring, but there are some things you cannot bring. These are things you got to leave at home because if I didn't talk about them, or more importantly, we didn't cover them, they're probably not allowed. So this is a list of things that Royal Caribbean does not allow you to bring, so don't bring them with you. Beer, hard liquor, spirits, marijuana, even CBD oil and CBD products, even if it's medicated and prescribed for you from a doctor, is not allowed to be brought on board. Irons and steamers this is a big one. There's so many people who bring their own irons and steamers on board. Kettles, coffee makers, or hot plates are not allowed. Candles not allowed. Uh, any product that produces heat that isn't included, we talked about already. 
baby monitors, extension cords, perishable foods and meats, hookahs and water hookah pipes, weapons including pepper spray, toy gun replicas, hoverboards, and ham radios are not allowed on Royal Caribbean. So there you go. There's our ultimate cruise packing list to help you have a better, easier cruise experience. That way you don't realize, oh boy, I forgot something at home. Many people tend to overpack when it comes to cruising, but sometimes forget about other necessities. So when you take your suitcase out of the closet and begin packing for your next cruise, hopefully this video will help you make sure that you have everything covered to ensure that you're not forgetting anything and hopefully not super overpacking because I'm an overpacker and I admit it and it is what it is. But anyway, let me know in the comments below your best cruise packing tips. What is a must have on board a cruise? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RollerCarbonBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.